Beloved, welcome back to the cabin. So who makes the best cordless tools? Now we go round and round about that, but from my understanding, when I talk to the real pros, when I went to Creative Woodworking to have all this TNG done, I looked at their shop and what I saw was I saw Makita and Fest Tool. And I asked him, who makes the best tools? Because they had like 20 of these, but they had the Makita, this router. Uh, and he said, well, uh, we use them all the time and this is what we find to be the best Makita and Fest Tool. So Fest Tool is not an option for me because I'm not gay, but I do have some Makita, but I am all in on Milwaukee. I asked him about Milwaukee and he said, Milwaukee is good as well. So I have some brand new tools here. Never let an opportunity go to waste. When you have work to do, this is the way that Proho justifies buying new tools. You can pay a tradesman to do it, or you can do it yourself with the money that you save, you buy the tools, and then you always have them. So I've got two brand new tools. This is pretty much the end, getting pretty, I say that, pretty much getting close to the end of my purchases of Milwaukee tools because I've been in the process of swapping everything out with a cord into cordless, and these were two of the very final ones. So I've, what I've got is I've got the M18 router, and I've got the new little M18 orbital. Let's do a little unboxing and uh, set them up and put them to use and, and see how they work. Of course, today we'll be starting the finished carpentry on the cozy cabin. This is my favorite thing. Boy, this is gonna be, I, I'm running into all sorts of things I hadn't considered. Because with log homes, Everything's always moving, so you have to you, know, you have to act accordingly. So a lot of this stuff is going to be making it up or making up, figuring solutions of problems that I don't even know are going to exist. So it might go a little bit slow, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll know. We'll learn together. So this, man, how nice. How many times I, I don't I hardly use a sander anymore because let me grab a battery. Because I get so tired of the cord. Excellent. That's a pretty nice form factor right there. Nice little orbital, five inch. We're going to be uh, needing to knock the corners off. That's why the router, I've got this little bit here. What do you call this? This is for softening the edges. Let's set this up, see how it looks. So first off, does it give the fizz? It absolutely, absolutely gives the fizz. We have, I'm not the router expert. But we have micro adjustment here, we have the quick adjustment, and then we have a, a lock there, which is kind of nice. Let's start off, this is the bit here, so this is the profile right here. We'll use this for just softening those edges because they're so sharp uh, from being freshly milled. It'll take a math degree to get, or, a, or a, what do you call it, industrial design engineering degree to figure out how to get these things apart. Well, I guess it's not too bad. I hope it's a reusable case, yes. I like it when manufacturers make cases that are good enough where you can reuse them. This is the included wrench, so we should be able to just hold that. Yep, and that locks in there. Excellent. Now to adjust this, we can open this up here, move that a little or a lot, and then get that, open this up and get that fine micro adjuster. So variable speed. I don't know what speed dug fur, the tree of my people, what it requires, but isn't that nice? That is a nice handy unit and no cord. Man, I am so over the cord. I just can't do the cord anymore. Orbital sander comes with a uh, dust collector box and then an uh, adapter there for your vac system. I don't know. Do I want to try that? Is it gonna, is it gonna be in the way? Is it gonna be a hassle? It doesn't seem, seem too bad. I think I, can, I think I can live with that. It will keep things cleaner. Man, that's cool to have a cordless cordless sander, so soft start. So we've got the pass-through switch, I like that. Nice rubber, variable speed. Well, it sounds good, does it not? Five inch, 
Now, all of the material here, this, the CVG fur that we, it came out with a finish of a 150 grit. So I had my manservant, Mr. Jiraiya, pick up some 220. So we'll finish off everything 220 and we'll just sand as we go so that it gets done. And we'll try this out today as well. So no cords. And then the last two things, I, I think the last thing I bought from Milwaukee, I bought the track saw and this little pin nailer right here. Like this is really, really nice. Brad nailer. The wood we'll be using today is the TNG, the Douglas fir here. Today's gonna be a little bit of a prototyping day, trying to figure out how to wrap these windows. Wrapping a window uh, is pretty much the same right here. Uh, well, of course, we'll have to, every single piece will be custom ripped because of the width, and we're dealing with logs and such. The problem is how do you deal with this gap up here? Now, the logs are gonna be moving, and you can't just fix it tight. You have to make some sort of a sliding or adjustable trim, which means kind of an overlap right here. So I don't know how I'm gonna do that, um, but how I work is I just start working and I think as I go and hopefully uh, <laughs> something, a light bulb will come up and I'll come up with a solution because I have no idea how to do this. Because Proho's plan, well hope is his plan. Hope that uh, the Holy Spirit gives us inspiration and uh, we come up with solutions to problems but it's no reason not to get going anyway right we'll remove the protectors these are wood windows very very beautiful windows so 3 16 you'll always want to reveal the 3 16 reveal is just perfect so i'll start by marking that and that will show us what we need to measure to Let's cut the length and then we'll rip it down the table saw. This finish work, when we're staining the wood or putting a clear finish on, it needs to be, uh, it needs to be as perfect as possible. There's no, no painting or puttying, so we're gonna cut out the bad pieces here and work with just the perfection. Oh, that is beautiful, beautiful wood. This is our first piece of trim on the bottom. Now these edges, I like sharp edges. I do not like hard rounded over edges. You take sandpaper and knock that off, I think it ruins the aesthetic of it, but that's very, very sharp and it's gonna break off. So we wanna soften those edges a little bit. So that's the purpose, the reason why I bought this router is because we're gonna have so much of this to do. So I'm gonna kinda eyeball this here and we just wanna take the most smallest amount off. That's close, maybe a little bit more. So each one of these, this is a 64th of an inch. So we'll start light and then we'll do a little test pass here. Let's see. That's not quite enough. We'll do one more, 64th. I'll bet that's pretty close right there. Oh, how nice not having a cord, goodness. That's a nice tool. Yes, that's what we want. I can feel right there. Just just softens those edges, but you can't really see that it's not a nice clean edge. Mr. Jiraiya just got his heat in here. Can feel it warming up. That's very nice, a big milestone.
I'm not going to do a miter on these corners because the thicknesses of each one of these is going to be different. And that would be, uh, well, I don't even know that's possible. Not by me, anyway. I originally figured for this trim, I figured in two by or one by six for the top. This would fill in this hole, and then it dawned on me today I can't do that because these logs will settle. Each one of these logs can settle like an eighth of an inch, so this can't be uptight or it'll just come down and just crush everything over the years. So what we have to do seems to me is to make a sliding trim. So. This will mount, this one by four will mount on here just like it is. And then we'll have to put a trim piece here that will mount to the logs and these will not be fastened. So over the years, this can move down naturally and won't affect the window. the get out of jail free card for carpenters. So that is it. That's how I'm going to do the casements. I think that actually looks really good. I like that reveal there. That will move down with the logs. I don't mind the butt joints. I can't, I just, I'm not going to do a miter on there. It's too inconsistent and um, again, d the different thicknesses. But what beautiful trim that is when that's all stained, or, or I'll use a clear on that. That uh, Doug fur is just gonna be beautiful. 
All right, well, I'm not going to bore you with uh, the rest of them. I'm going to put my head down here and get to work and start uh, trimming all these out. And that's it. As far as the tools go, amazing. Amazing. Uh, it just makes the job so much easier not having the cords. They're, they're just chef's kiss. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, well, may God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video.